Today, there's some great deals on CPUs. Intel's 13th and 14th gen CPUs are even worse than we thought. Intel's next gen desktop CPUs, RX 8000 ray tracing is completely different, and Nvidia's 5090 is right around the corner. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, AMD's Ryzen 7000 X3D chips are having a massive sale right now. I'm talking the 7900X3D is down from $600 all the way to $391 on Amazon. And get this, it's just $329 on Ants Online. Then we have the 7950X3D and it's just $577 on Amazon right now, down from its $700 launch price. Then the 7800X3D is down to $359 with this coupon code. And finally, even the new 5700 X3D, for those who are still on their AM4 boards, has dropped from $250 to $230. Obviously not a huge difference, but given it was already at a pretty good price, it's just gotten even better. So yeah, if you're interested in these, I'll have affiliate links down in the description below. They don't cost you anything more, and it helps the channel out. Next up for today, we have yet another update for Intel's 13th and 14th gen CPU crashing problems. Last time, I discussed a leaked message to motherboard vendors from Intel, and they seem to more or less put the blame square on partners. But like I've said multiple times before, I don't really think they're to blame. Simply put, motherboard makers have been setting higher power limits for years, and because CPUs typically have safeguards for this, it didn't matter. But for whatever reason, some of their higher-end Raptor Lake and Raptor Lake refresh CPUs don't. Well, Today we now have a better idea of just how many i9 processors are able to run games at the BIOS default settings. The story comes from a user on the Chipel forums who's apparently tested hundreds of Intel's 13th and 14th gen i9 CPUs, and according to him, only 40-50% to 50 of Intel's 13,900K chips are able to run with BIOS defaults, meaning roughly half of users with the 13,900K will likely run into crashes while using default BIOS settings, and it gets even worse when we move to the 14,900K. According to the poster, only 2 out of every 10 CPUs can run well in BIOS defaults. Basically, this is a serious issue that affects the vast majority of users, and as we've seen, the answer is going to hurt performance. Like I've said before, reviewers should definitely re-review their 13th and 14th gen CPUs, at least the i9 versions. Obviously, this issue isn't their fault, but we need to see the performance of these chips at settings that don't cause a crash. And next up, we just got some new information on Intel's next-gen Arrow Lake desktop CPUs. Starting things off, known leaker Raichu has just leaked the actual SKUs of their next-gen parts. Remember that Arrow Lake is set to bring Intel's new Core Ultra naming scheme to desktop. And according to Raichu, Intel's doing something interesting with their K and non-K models to help differentiate the two. For starters, as you can see, we have the K series from top to bottom, the 285K, 265K, and 245K. Then the non-K SKUs are apparently being changed to 275, 255, and 240. Things are very different this time around, with the non-K models actually getting a separate number besides just removing the K, which I honestly like. I think it helps to better separate the chips, especially given they are quite different. Don't forget that they don't just have their multiplier unlocked, but the K models also come with higher clocks and a higher TDP. Either way, I'm assuming the 285K is the i9, the 265K is the i7, and the 245K is the i5. Not only that, but at a recent MSI event in China, they seem to suggest these CPUs could be coming as early as Q3 of this year. Basically, Intel's next gen could be releasing even sooner than we thought. Next, we have a very interesting story on AMD's next-gen RX 8000 GPUs. Specifically, known leaker Kepler on X recently discussed AMD's next-gen ray tracing. As you can see here, he claims that ray tracing looks brand new. He further expands to say that RDNA 3's ray tracing was based off of RDNA 2, just with some improvements, while RDNA 4 looks completely different. Remember that we've seen from multiple sources at this point that we can expect a huge jump in AMD's next-gen ray tracing, and we've seen a that claims the PS5 Pro has 8-level bounding volume hierarchy, which means it could theoretically double the throughput from RDNA 3. And while rumors currently point to there not being high-end RDNA 4-based GPUs, if this is true, it would still mean that AMD will be able to compete much better in the mid-range, potentially even beating Nvidia in both raster performance and ray tracing. Time, as always, will tell. 
And lastly for today, it looks like NVIDIA's RTX 5090 announcement is right around the corner. According to a new video from Moore's Law is Dead, things are heating up over at NVIDIA, as he's gotten more information from his sources. And while this is mostly good news, it does include a bit of bad. Remember that not too long ago, most rumors pointed to NVIDIA releasing both the RTX 5090 and 5080 right alongside each other. Now, according to this, his first source is getting the impression that they'll only be launching the RTX 5090 this year, though he isn't 100% sure about that. For those who were hoping for a lower end option, you'll likely have to wait until sometime next year, at least the way this sounds. But this brings me to the much better news. According to not just one, but two sources, the RTX 5090 will apparently be announced at this year's Computex, which for those who don't know, is just a month away. Meaning Nvidia's next gen is literally weeks away. At least the announcement that is, as the actual release is apparently set to come in either Q3 or Q4. But at least if it is in Q4, it's likely in early early Q4, but once again we should finally get a chance to actually see the chips in just a few weeks, and hopefully find out the price as well. So while that does it for today, how much do you think NVIDIA's next-gen RTX 5090 will be? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please make sure to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day!